Welcome back to Beery TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here, and today we're going to talk about the term open gate. What does it mean? Now, if you're a motion picture, 35 millimeter camera operator and have been for decades, you already know this, you can tune out now. But if you've never heard this term, I implore you to stick around and listen because you're going to want to know it. Whether you're getting into modern filmmaking or content creation or vlogging, this is actually be very important for you to understand. And why I'm mentioning is because we have quite a few cameras coming out now that are featuring open gate as a concept. In fact, Jordan is shooting me on the Panasonic GH6 right now in its 5.8K uh, 4 3 aspect ratio, as you can see there, open gate mode. And what you're going to see visually today is how we can change the aspect ratios. Keep an eye out for that. Let's get into explaining the term. Now, very simply, open gate means well, back in the day with film stock recording the entire recordable area without any masking of aspect ratio. And with modern digital cameras, it means using the entire sensor, whatever its native ratio is. So you're not throwing anything away. You're recording the full sensor top to bottom and side to side. Now, commonly, you're going to find digital sensors in a 4-3 ratio, like you can see here right now, or 3-2 is very common. You can visualize that here. But even modern cameras like the GoPro 11 that just came out feature an 8-7 sensor. So why is this significant? Well, when we're taking pictures, we're using the full sensor. I mean, if you have a 3-2 ratio sensor camera and you take a photo, it's 3-2 ratio. But up until recently, when you record video, you don't get the full sensor. In fact, we're usually cropping down to 16 by 9. I mean, this is ubiquitous with HD videography or ultra HD videography. There's a lot of reasons why this happens. I mean, first off, it might just be that if the sensor reads out too slow from the entire top to the entire bottom to actually record video properly. So by cropping the top and bottom off, you have a shorter amount of distance the sensor readout's adequate for that, you can get away with it. Or maybe it's just that the camera's actual processor isn't powerful enough to handle all that extra data recording the entire sensor, and so it has to crop out of necessity to be able to manage that data. Or maybe it's just that you've got bottlenecks with your recording media. There's lots of reasons why it just cannot record the full sensor. Now this concept has been around for quite some time, but why we're making this video now is you're going to start to hear about it more and more and more. I mean, the Panasonic GH5 shot open gate, that was years ago, but of course now the GH6 does it. Fujifilm X-H2S now offers open gate recording. A lot of action cams have been doing this for a while as well, giving you 4-3 full ratio video at you know quite high resolution. So you're going to hear about this more and more and more, and it's going to give you basically three substantial benefits in your workflow. So the first major benefit is it gives you the freedom to shoot your full native resolution and then crop afterwards, either for creative intent or for delivery. So for example, right now you can see the whole four by three frame, but you might say, oh, I don't want to see Chris's pasty legs. Let's crop those out. So then Jordan can crop to 16 by nine, as you can see here, and legs are gone. Or maybe you're like, mm, no, give me some more of them knees. And then Jordan could just accentuate that. But let's not do that. Jordan, don't do that. Stop it. All right. So you have that freedom to then crop or reframe based on your artistic intent, and that's very powerful, but you might also find this useful just for the way you're going to deliver this to your viewers. So for example, we shot our Sergeant Chris Nichols shorts for three open gate, and we only had to do it once. We didn't have to do multiple recordings for different aspect ratios. We could just crop it afterwards. So for example, our viewers are going to look at this through YouTube on their TV screen or the computer monitor. We did that as a classic 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But for TikTok and Reels, where we expect that our viewers are going to watch this on their smartphone in more of a vertical fashion, we simply reframed it vertically and it suited that just fine as well. Benefit number two is maybe you don't want to follow the pack. Maybe you want to buck the trend because the fact is, everybody shoots video in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Back in the day, we had a format called Academy Ratio, which was very similar to 4.3, and that was the gold standard until widescreen looks became in vogue. But you've got modern filmmakers making movies like uh, First Cow or Lighthouse, and those are beautiful movies shot in Academy Ratio. Maybe you just want to stick with that more boxy format and celebrate that unique look. Benefit number three is for those of you right now that are yelling at your screen saying, you Chris I don't want boxy video that's for squares I want wider aspect ratios I want the look of scope but I don't want that 16 by 9 crop factor throwing away detail on the top and bottom and using anamorphics with barely any squeeze factor I want a sensor that allows me to use the total verticality from top to bottom of the sensor get those big squeeze factors get that motion picture scope look well this is exactly what you get with cameras that can record open gate and use the entire height of that sensor top to bottom 
Now, before we go, Jordan and I have two demands. First off, although we are guilty of perpetuating the term open gate in this very video, we actually feel like this is a really good opportunity to ditch that term. I mean, as we talked about at the start of the video, that really harkens back to a golden era of motion picture filmmaking, but it can be quite confusing for New Year's nowadays. And maybe with the digital era, we should call it something more specific, like full sensor recording, for example. You know, something implies that your camera is actually utilizing the entire sensor surface area to record its video as an option. Second demand that we have, all right? So you've got this great new feature that's coming out. We're happy to see it in the cameras that do offer it, but there are cameras out there that have fast enough reading sensors and the processing power that they should also be able to do open gate. And they're already on the market now. Cameras like the OM System OM-1, cameras like the Nikon Z9, the Canon EOS R3. Why don't they actually allow this? It's wishful thinking that going forward, maybe they will unlock that, I don't know. But what we do know is we'll probably see this concept of full sensor recording being more and more common in the future. And that's why we hope that you found this video educational and useful. Please do leave your comments below. Uh, let us know if you have any questions about this concept. Otherwise, like, subscribe, click that notification bell. Let us know we're doing a good job. We'll come out with more educational content soon. Otherwise, from Jordan and myself, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you soon for another episode of Deep Your View TV.